determining what makes good client correspondence has to be seen in the light of two things. Number one, the identity of your client, the, the audience, and number two, the a purpose or context of that client correspondence. And so starting with the first, if your client is a fellow professional, and sometimes we have clients that are lawyers, or bankers, or uh, accountants, professionals uh, working for boards of directors for listed companies, those sorts of clients will be uh, hugely sophisticated, uh, highly intelligent and also very used to the type of correspondence that one receives from their lawyers. And so you would tailor your correspondence with those sorts of uh, professional clients um, in a way that you wouldn't with lay clients uh, or clients who, are, who haven't used lawyers before. Um, so it's very important to be respectful of who your target audience is and uh, particularly with young lawyers, I'm constantly reminding them there is absolutely no need to be pompous or to show your workings or to go into a long explanation of what case law you've researched for what is essentially a simple question uh, deserving a simple answer. And it's so interesting to see the overuse of Latin, uh, the overuse of long uh, overly learned ex explanations that are very far too technical for a client's needs. But more importantly, don't give the client what they want, which is just a simple and reasoned answer. Most clients uh, simply want a short, reasoned answer, and most clients are far too busy to be bombarded with lengthy legal documents showing all of the workings that have resulted in the final conclusion. The second part of the, the answer, I think, has to revolve around uh, the context because what are you seeking to communicate with the client? It may be that you are communicating some initial advice, strategy that will take you forward for the next two years of litigation. It may be that you are issuing a one-off opinion through correspondence telling them the answer is very simple, it's very black and white, the options are very binary. Uh, it may be that you are having to um, withdraw advice that you have previously given, a very difficult form of correspondence to write, uh, because there's a balance between not wanting your client to lose confidence in you, but at the same time persuading the client that the, the next step is one that he or she should take. So context becomes important because how formal or casual uh, the, the means in which you communicate will absolutely be informed by the context um, and the stage that you find yourself in uh, with the client. When I review correspondence that my young lawyers have drafted for me, um, I am looking for a number of factors. The most important with client correspondence is um, some element of showing empathy to the client because no clients come to lawyers in entirely happy circumstances. Whatever the issue, whether it be a purely transactional, uh, i.e. deal-making type arrangement, or in a contentious situation, i.e. litigation, there will be stresses and concerns that the clients will have. And it's very important that young lawyers show some empathy in the sense that they are standing in the shoes of the client and that they are fighting the client's cause. And what really, really irritates clients is the feeling that they are receiving correspondence from their lawyers that um, is perfunctory or cursory and doesn't show that they, they understand the gravity of the client situation and that they have uh, compassion uh, for uh, the client's needs. And so just getting that tone right to express the necessary um, reaction that the client might have. So for example, 
if we are writing to the client to inform them of a discourteous letter from the other side or a derisory offer from the other side or a very difficult point in the negotiations, it's important as lawyers to express an understanding of how the client would react to that and to say, no doubt you will consider this offer derisory and we agree. And that then makes the client really feel and understand that you genuinely um, understand the client's situation. Turning to the more technical aspects of what I'm looking for in client correspondence when I review uh, the work of the initial drafts of my young lawyers, the writing has to be in plain English and clear. There has to be a simple, obvious, logical structure to the, to, the, to the correspondence and the command of the English language has to be no less than excellent.